right, first and foremost, we want to say call Elohim, La Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah, right? That's all praises to the Most High God and the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, right? Who are we? We the Sakari Philly said, right? Come to uh, bring light in this dark world, right? Your brother Yeramya. Told you guys, Sean, everybody else has a wolf. Right, and we come to and we come to edify our people, right? We come down, we come week in and week out, right? The highways, the byways, sit down to edify our people. And this topic is gonna be in particular because uh, um, a sister had made a post. She had made a post about um, uh, uh, sex not being marriage, right? But the sister don't know, or maybe she do know. I'm not that sure that she was leaning upon her own understanding now. Let me just make a correction real quick. We don't we don't come to do these videos and to do sit downs to say, you know, you know, the Lord dealing with us, we got all the breakdowns. What we come to do is to actually to put ourselves down, to put our understanding down, and to uplift the Heavenly Father, right? His understanding, who was anointed son. Right. So we're gonna go into the book and we're gonna see what the book says sex is, right? And we're gonna use logic and reasoning. Right, we're going, we're going, we're going to go into it today. So, um, what you got? You got sixty. Uh, read what you got. We we'll go to that one first. Thirty and uh, four. Uh, Genesis chapter thirty, verse four. Come on. And she gave him Bilha, her handmaid, to wife. And right, and this is talking about Jacob, right? Right, and she gave Bilha her her, her her handmaid for Jacob the wife. Come on. And Jacob went up, went in into her. And Jacob did what? Went in unto her. And Jacob went into her. Right now, we we don't need to play games or beat around the bushes. When it's saying that he went into her, right? He went into her, right? He got busy, right? Come on. And Rachel said, "God has judged me, and hath also heard my voice." Right, and that's because she was pronouncing the baby that she got. Right, and that's sitting on there. That's sitting on there. Uh, read sixty-seven. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 67. Come on. And Isaac brought her onto his mother, Sarah's tent. And Isaac, right, brought Rebecca to his mother, Sarah's tent. The same thing that brothers do today, right? They may not could be able to have their own place yet. It's still, you know, still young. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't probably afford to get an apartment real quick. I mean, they couldn't, you know, get a hotel. So they said what? He said what? And brought her to his Sarah's Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Right, and, and Isaac brought Rebecca into his mother Sarah's tent. And what he do? And took Rebecca. And he what? And took Rebecca. No, he played pity pet with Rebecca. And took Rebecca. He's it, it's the scripture said the Holy Bible, right, said that Isaac took Rebecca. Like how do you take a woman, right? It's not talking about that he took her out to a mall to see what what was her size and 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 a gown <laughs> size. It's not talking about that. Read it again. Isaac brought her onto his mother Sarah's tent mm -hmm. and took Rebecca mm -hmm. and she became his wife. And that's how the brother got a wife because he took her. He went into her, right? This is what the Lord said. So right, so we so we're gonna go into it because it's like in reality, like like we're not even understanding, you know, that we be that that we actually go against the Heavenly Father and his and his will to try to uphold our own. But matter of fact, let's do this. Matter of fact, get Deuteronomy Deuteronomy twenty two. Let's touch this first. All right, let's touch this first. Because actually, you know, we're supposed to, the scripture says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Not our own, and we can't lean on to our own understanding. Get uh, Jeremiah 17 real quick. 17 and 9. Right? Um, read what you got. Sorry, 13, 22. Yeah, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 13. Come on. If any man take a wife, if any man do what? If any man take a wife and go in unto her. So what does Deuteronomy mean? Deuteronomy means second law. So this is this is the law that we read. So we're not going to go from a man's opinion. Read what you got, 17 and 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. So our mind is deceitful above all things. God. Right, come on. And desperately wicked. And our minds is wicked as hell, right? This is why the scriptures say, lean not upon thy own understanding. Come on. Who can know it? Right, and who can know, who can know your mind, right? right? So this is why the Lord says, 
don't lean on your mind, lean on his understanding, because he's going to show the way. Now we're going to read Deuteronomy, which again, Deuteronomy means second law. So this is a law. So people want to know, you know, oh, is it a law that uh, sex is marriage? We're going to find out, right, using logic and reason. Come on. Verse 13, if any man take a wife and go in unto her and pay her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her, Say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, found her not a maid. And found her not a maid, right? And that's it's being saying that he found her not chaste. He found her, in today's term, not a, a, a virgin, right? So this is what it's saying, that he found her not a virgin. Come on. Verse 15. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity. Bring forth what? Tokens of the virgin. The damsel's virginity. Now, what's a token? Actually, a sister from West Africa I was working with, actually, when I spoke about it, she said that they still practice certain tribes, this custom in West Africa, right? Laying down a white sheet, right? And when a, a female is having what we would call today as her virginity token, right? She, that, that, that spread, that's the token, right? Once, once she had sex and a hymen got broke, right? And that blood stain was on the sheets. Right? That that was the symbol of the seal. That was the seal of them being bonded together. Right? And proof. Come on. I'll start from the top of 15. Then shall the father of the damsel and the mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Verse 16. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. He, he what? He hated her. He gave her unto, unto wife. Right, and this man hated her. How? Because now you, you just found fault in her. And he was what? Why? Oh, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying. And now he's speaking against her. How? I have found not thy daughter a maid. I found her not a virgin, right? Come on. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And yet right. this is the proof, right, that when he got with her, she had her virginity. So why would the Lord put this in the law? If this wasn't that important, why why was it a custom that you that you would have to keep proof of your daughter's virginity, right? When a, um when a man uh, had took it from her, right? If it, if it wasn't that important, then why would it why would it be put in these scriptures, right? Where you at? Fifteen. Uh, keep going. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Mm -hmm. Verse eighteen. And the elders of the city shall take that man and chastise. Him. And chastised him because he bare uh, false witness against her. Right, but jump down, jump down to twenty real quick. Verse twenty. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of the virginity be not found, and and if this be true, right, and if what a man was saying was true, and he and he got a harlot, he got somebody that didn't have their virginity. Come on. she wasn't chased, right? That she wasn't a virgin, right? Come on. Then shall they bring out of the damsel to the door of her father's house. Come on. And the men of her city shall stone her. They should do what? Stone her. So if not having your virginity was not so important to the Bible and you can, and you can get with multiple people, right? Or, or just, you know, I just to keep it for this very special person, but then I give it to him and then, oh, well, you know, that's cool because I didn't technically marry him yet. So if it wasn't that important, why the Lord said put this woman to death, right? Right. right? If she if she was going around trying to trying to person, uh, um, personate a, a, a chaste woman, try to personate a, a virgin, right? If it wasn't that important. Now, now let's go into this though real quick, because you know, our, our people we up we, we we claim to uphold God laws, but in reality, a lot of times what we do is we uphold man's laws. Man's laws mainly being Esau. So let's get Esau opinion. Why? Because they said what? This country was found uh, on the Bible, right? This is a a, a, a Bible-based uh, country with what they say. But we know through their proofs that they lying, right? But these people understand the scriptures, right? And this and this going to prove it, right? Read, read this real quick. Can you divorce your wife? Can for, you what? Can you divorce your wife Come on. for not consummating the marriage? For not consummating the marriage. Can you divorce your wife for not consummating the marriage? Who wrote this article? Right, read that real quick. Bye. By River Braun, J.D. This is a lawyer, right? This is a lawyer who actually 
um, when you actually look it up, he actually dealt with uh, uh, marriage cases, uh, divorce cases. He dealt with corporation cases, not to try to give, you know, uh, credit to this man, but just to speak on some of his credentials, right? Come on. Consummating the marriage or entering a sexual relationship. Consummating the marriage or entering a sexual relationship, come on. After the wedding, at least once, is the factor that decide whether a spouse seeks divorce or annulment. Come on. Divorce laws vary by state. Divorce laws vary by states, come on. However, many states recognize that the failure to consummate a marriage is grounds for annulment. However, many states recognize that a So, so according to even the white man's law, y'all can't hold back sex, right. right? Come on. In some states, a spouse may seek a divorce on the grounds that the spouse may have consummated the marriage, but the spouse now refuses to continue with having sexual relations. Why? Because it's your duty. Uh -huh. I mean, it's your duty to have sex with right. the man, right? Read on. After a wedding, it is customary and expected that the parties live together and have con consummate their legal union. Come on. If a couple does not have sexual intercourse after the wedding, either spouse may fall, file for a divorce. Hold up, hold up, read that part again. If if a couple does not have sexual intercourse after the wedding, either spouse may file for a divorce or annulment. Why, why would this be a law in many states uh -huh. if, if sex ain't marriage? If I can right. file a divorce based upon I had sex with her, but then I didn't, I'm not having sex with her no more, but now I can file a divorce. If if sex ain't marriage, then why can why can we divorce according to man's law, yeah. right? And actually, when you do the research, actually, it's been certain cases in history. Like, I didn't even want to uh, uh, take certain of these marriages down, but I was actually, in looking it up, I seen certain marriages where a, a man who didn't have sex with the woman, he actually had um, 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 it annulled, um, his marriage uh, um, annulment, based upon him not having sex with her. Meaning them going to the honeymoon suite and him not having sex with her. So he, so it, it basically went on his record that he was never even married, right? If walking down the aisle is so important. Is it, will this any more on that? Matter of fact, that's it, that's it. It's a lot too. It's, um, it's like, That, that makes the contract. Uh, <laughs> that makes the uh, the bond. You uh, you gonna start at uh, six. Now um now hold up real quick because um because like in reality we we just trying to use logic and reasoning. And this is what our people what we gotta do. First of all, first and foremost, we gotta put the heavenly Father's word above all. Right. right. So now we did that, and we seen that in His word He said that sex is marriage. We did that. We went to Deuteronomy. We went to Genesis. Right, and we've seen that in his word that sex is marriage. Now we're going to use logic and reasoning, right, based upon the scriptures, right? If we're if we're a chosen people, right, right, and we're above all nations, right, does it actually make sense for me to teach my kids that you know you can get with anybody who you get with, but you know, as long as you didn't walk down the aisle with them, you're not bonded with them. This is not something that a great nation would do, right? Yeah, I mean, but actually something the great nation would do is they would tell them, look, that's your sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, like that's your sister based upon her being of your nation. You lay down with her, you're with her. That's your wife, right? And that's what the Lord said. So we're going to use logic and reason because why? If we're such a great nation, we should be able to use logic and reason. So here's what you got, four and six. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse six. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do them what? The commandments, right? Uh -huh. Deuteronomy. Come on. For well, this is the wisdom, this is your wisdom. This the, is your what? This is your wisdom and understanding Come on. in the sight of the nations. So this, this, the scriptures is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. So the Lord gave you instructions on what stuff was. 
and, and on, on what marriage was. So this is your wisdom and sight of uh, in the nations, right? Because other nations would fornicate. They would have uh, what you would call loose sex. We, we, we were given understanding on what sex was, right? Come on. It, uh, we, shall, we shall hear all these statues and say, surely this, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Because if we just teach them that you can have loose sex and that you're not married, that it's all okay. Or like, oh, well, you know, sex is a, 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 a cherishable thing. So wait until the person who you get and then have laid down with them. That's good. That's good to say that. But if you're not installing in her head that sex is marriage, then she can just get with a brother. And then, you know, oh, well, you know, I, I tried, but, you know, I'm not bonded with him. Right? Come on. For what nation is there so great? Who had God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon upon him for? That's eight. Uh, that's our seven. No, read eight. Eight. In what nation is he, is there so great that had statues and judgment so right, so righteous? As all, the, uh, as all these law which I set uh, before you this day. Right, so what one nation is like us, no nation is like us. So this is why you got to understand that the way that uh, these other nations move, they're not the way that we're supposed to move. We're supposed to move, thus saith the Lord, with the Lord guiding our steps, right? And what we do, we, we, we uphold. And we're not trying to say that getting married or walking down the aisle um, that's wrong, right? Because that's that's just a tradition, right? That's a tradition that, that Israelites had, uh, had had, right? The Messiah went to a wedding, right? So it's like, you know, actually having the ceremony is, is nothing wrong with that. You let the community know who you're with, right? So it's, it's we're not saying that it's nothing, that there's something wrong with that or condemning it, but what we're saying is that the physical act of sex is marriage. And, to, and to, for you to try to uphold ceremony or traditions which it really, really is man traditions, right? And you try to uphold that over the Heavenly Father. What you're doing is you're belittling what the Lord said, and you're upholding man's, all right? And the Lord said that this is a hypocrite, hypocrites, right? Read uh, 8, 7 and 8. Now, this is the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God. So you lay aside the commandment of the Most High God, come on. Ye hold the doctrine of men. And you uphold walking down the aisle. Put a ring on that finger, right? Come on. As the washing of pots and cups Come on. and many other things and many other such like things you do. Come on. Verse 9, and he said to them, Full well you reject the commandment of God. Full well, full well, you know you're rejecting the commandment of God, right? Come on. That you may keep your own tradition. Just so just so you can be satisfied with thus saith me, right? Thus saith a man. Right? Uh -huh. That's what that's what you're trying to go into. Come on. Verse 10. No, uh, drop down to uh, verse uh, 13 real quick. Verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect. Making what? The word of God of none effect. That's And that's what you do when you uphold the traditions of men. You make the word of the Heavenly Father without effect because you uphold man traditions and what man says, uh, right, over your own, right? Come on. Through your tradition, which you have delivered. Through your traditions, which you delivered. Now, the thing is, is that when you look at this sex is marriage thing, like it's, it's not a whole lot of brothers that's in Israel that have a, 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 a problem with this, right? They understand this and they just, you know, and they, they roll with the, the punches, so to say, because like a lot of things we didn't know in this world. So, you know, we, we used to the customs of this world. So when coming to the truth, you hear the truth, it's that bitter, uh, it's that bitter medicine. So at the end of the day, we got to still accept what the Lord said. And a lot of men is willing to accept it. But what I come to find out, and, you know, not the bash you sisters, but I come to find out that a lot of sisters don't like to uphold uh, this. And they don't they don't want to believe that sex is marriage, right? And it goes deep. Um, get uh, 2 Corinthians, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, what you got? Oh, read it, read it real quick. Uh, Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. 
The law of the Lord is perfect. No, it's, it's halfway. The law of the Lord is perfect. What God said is perfect, right? Come on. Converting the soul. And it changes you, right? And this is going to go into the scripture that we get ready to bring out. And it does. It changes you. So for a lot of sisters, they don't want to, they don't want to try to proceed that sex is marriage because it's it's hard, it's hard, it weighs heavy on their conscience, right? Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of what the most high God said is sure, right? Making wise the simple. And it make wise. We were simple brothers, right? And the Lord, through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Al Shah, is giving us wisdom, right? And this is how we become uh, wiser through the Heavenly Father, right? Of no credit or no doing of our own. Now, now, sisters, it's hard for them because why? They, they, how many men that they may have been with in their life. So it's hard for them to accept that sex is marriage because then you, you have to start accepting it like that. If sex is marriage, then all then these dudes that I slept with, let's just give a low ball it, let's just say four eight. You know I mean, I'm married to all of them. When a brother can view the situation and be like, oh dang, I'm coming to the truth, sex is marriage, dang, she probably would have made a nice wife for me. I mean, if I had a better understanding, yeah, you know I mean, I probably could have did right by the sisters. Like she she was a solid sister. But you know, like, you know, you know what I mean, that doesn't change the fact that sex is still marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we, we still more accepted than sisters. But what sisters need to understand is that, you know, we we not really trying to bash our sisters. We're trying to uplift them in the spirit of the Lord. Right? Come on, read that real quick. Um uh, five and seventeen. Uh, this is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, and that's what you want to claim to be, right? Because you're a Hebrew Israelite now. Right. You're, you're getting your, your head wrapped. You're wearing fringes. Yeah, you know I mean, you're trying to change your ways. Read it again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. So, therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, come on. He is a new creature. He is a what? A new creature. So now, so now, through the spirit of the Heavenly Father, right, you're a new creature, right? So, what? Come on. Old things are passed away. And, that, and old things are passed away. And with us reading this, we're not saying, we're not trying to justify like Cardi B. Cardi B gonna say what? I had as many uh, male partners as I did as my age. And, and she was like 27 or whatever at the time when she said it, right? So we're not trying to condone that. But what we're trying to say is, uh, read it again. Verse 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things are become new. Right, and you're a new creature in Hamashiach. And we need to understand and accept that and, and, and put our burdens and all our worries and fears on him, right? Because he's strong enough to bear it, right? All this wickedness that we did in the world, we have to put it on him and try to be chaste and try to be correct people currently, right? We can't make the word of the Lord be something else just to please us, just to make just to make us feel warm and fuzzy inside. The word of the Lord is what it is, and we gotta accept it, right? That, that, that's it on that. And with, and with that, we wanna give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High God, and thank the Heavenly Father for delivering us, delivering us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Right? And with that, we say shalom.